All right, shall one? First off, I'm going to start up with saying all praises, honor, and glory is due unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Kadash. That's all praises to the world called God, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, Ba'ashem, meaning in the name of Yahweh Shai, be the name of the only God and Son. I also want to say double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and Peace and Mercy to the Hopeful Lake, preaching this word in truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Tyler Bond of Great Mills on the Arizona Flip Camp Low Will with another video to edify. And I wanted to go on the fact that there's no virgin birth in the scriptures and the Lord had a father. You know, because you when when people say that you're 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 jumping over prophecy. Right? So the prophecy states that unto us a child will be born, or unto us a savior be born out of our own kindred, the Israelites. You know, and for you to be an Israelite, lineage comes through your father. Right? So when you go to Numbers 1 and 18, I'll start off there and prove that one point. Numbers 1 and 18, it says, And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day, uh, on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees. Now when you go to these words, it's important to look these words up. Take this into take this parallel off. So this is numbers one and eighteen. That word for lineage and pedigree is something that you have to look up. So pedigree, Yalad, which means to bear, bring forth, beget, gender. Right? Beget, born. To cause, to help, to bring forth, to assist, to tend, or tend as a midwife, right? To born, beget a child. So, that's for the word uh, 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 pedigree, right? So, it means to have a child, right? So, when you go back to that Numbers 1 and 18, it says, And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees, their families, after their, uh, after their families, in the house of their fathers. You see, so the lineage, the pedigree, who, who you belong to as a people all comes through your father. Even if who you belong to as far as a bloodline goes, all comes from the Father. So for prophecy to be fulfilled, when you go back into Isaiah 7. And 14, it says, Therefore, Yahweh himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Now, when you go to this word virgin, right? It means what? Ilama, and it means virgin, young woman, and marriageable age. So that's really what it was talking about, a woman of marriageable age. It didn't mean she was not going to have any sex. There's a whole different word for, for a woman that has never had sex. You see? So this woman, is, was Mary, was of marriageable age. She's a young woman, man. Now, if you got to go further back, you have to know the customs of how marriages worked according to the scriptures. Because there was something called, what, the token. Let me get that. Right here, the token of virginity, and this is why, why uh, 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 when you go back into it, Yahweh's yeah, father Joseph didn't want want uh, uh, to bring Mary out because he didn't hold it in. You see, when you go to this, it says, 
If any man, verse 13, Deuteronomy 22 and 13, if any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasion to, uh, of speech against her and, and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid, meaning not a virgin, right? It says says, meaning not a virgin as in, in sex. She had already slept with someone. It says, then shall the father of the desert and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of, of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in, in the gate. And that token of the virginity is ain't talking about some damn chastity belt. It's really talking about uh, 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 the, the bed sheets or the cloth they laid on while they were having their first, uh, you know, marital uh, uh, sex, right? When you bust the cherry, right? When you, that's what it's talking about. That's the token of virginity. And that's what this is talking about. That's why Joseph in the New Testament said uh, he was a just man and not will, uh, wanting to uh, bring any shame upon her, right? He wanted to put her away because... Because he never went through the ceremony where the parents were able to get that token of virginity. And that, that would have brought great shame on her. Right? You know, because people talk, you know how Jake is. Bullshitting. Niggas would end up talking, saying ill things about the person. And even try to put him to death because in the law, if a woman, right? It says, uh, and the devil's father shall say unto the elders... I gave my daughter unto this man, a wife, and he hated her. And lo, he gave it the occasion to speak against her. And when you go into this law, if the woman be found, but if the things be true, right? Verse 20 says, but if the things be true and the tokens of virginity not be found for the damsel, then shall they bring out the damsel to the door of her, her father's house. And the men of the city shall stone her with stones that she die because she had wrote folly in Israel. To play the whore in her mother's house, in her father's house, so shall thou put a evil away from among you. See, so Joseph, knowing this, this is why he moved in such a way. Now, going back to Isaiah uh, fourteen, Isaiah seven, sorry, seven and fourteen, it says, "Therefore, Yahweh, Yahweh himself shall give you." A sign, behold, a woman of marriageable age, that's what that means right there for that virgin, shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Right? Now, when you go to the New Testament, it says the same thing there. Agreeing with the Old Testament. Because you have to go back into prophecies to understand the Lord. This is Isaiah, uh, Matthews 1 and 23. It says, um, I'll start at 22. It says, Now all, all this this was done that it might be fulfilled that was spoken of the prophet. You know what? I got to start up because this, <laughs> this goes into it. It says, um, Start at 21. It says, and she, bring, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai. For he shall save his people from their sins, his people, Operative pronoun, right? His people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, uh, which was spoken of Yahweh, spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, uh, "Behold, a virgin shall bring shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, right? Unto us a son is born, right? It says, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted the Most High with us." You see? Now, and it, if you go up on this, it says uh, right here, verse 20, it says, But while he thought of these things, behold, the angel appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, right? Because he laid with her. That's why he was, she was his wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. When you go to John 66, John 6 and 63, Right, I'll get it real quick. It tells you what the spirit is, man. John 6 and 63. And it says, 
It is the spirit that quickeneth, it, the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, and what words was he speaking? All that was written in the Old Testament, the New Testament had not been written. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So that's the spirit. That's that Holy Ghost that it talks about. That separate spirit is talking about the, all the words of the Lord. Because the Lord, his birthing, right, his conception was all according to, to, the, to the scriptures. A woman of marriageable age, right, brought forth Yahweh Shai. And it, it fulfilled the prophecy. That's why it was of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you go to Luke 1 and 27, they even tell you right there. Luke 1 and 27. Yeah, Luke 1 and 27. It says, a ver it says um, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary, meaning the woman of marriageable age. Right, was the spouse of Joseph, who was of the house of David, covering prophecy again. Because what when you go back to uh, uh, Second Samuel's, it tells you that the, uh, the seed of David, a throne, would be set up forever. You know, you have to go into prophecy to really be able to break these things down. This is Isaiah nine in uh, six. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us, it says, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall, no, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it in, in, with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forevermore, the zeal of the Most High will perform this. You see? You know, the Lord was going to raise him up of the seed of David. And that's why in the first chapter of Matthews, what does it go over? The lineage was all tracks, tracks back to what? David and his father. All the way back to Adam. Right? So this is uh, Luke 2. And 48, it says, sort of 47, it says, and all that and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. You see? So they even know, Mary even know, if, if anybody knew who the father was, right? It's not like the whole world was in like today where, where you're just going to pick up everybody and, and a woman has a, a baby by somebody else. You see, it's not like that, man. In the old world, they knew who the father was because what? Uh, uh, Joseph went into Mary. Which was lawful. That was the order of things since it came forth, right? The seed went into the woman, and then the seed came from the man. You see, Hebrews 2. And 16. It says, um, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, right? But is the nature of angels, of spiritual bodies, right? He said he uh, he he he, uh, he uh, suffered in like flesh, meaning what he had to come for you to be of like flesh. You had to come, and what through sex, just like everybody else comes through. It says, "For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed." Let's get that in the blue letter. Right, that word seed there is the Greek 4689. It means sperma. Sperma, what does that sound like? Sperm from, uh, from which a plant germinates 
talking about the seed, the seed, the grain of kernel, which contains in itself, within itself, the germ, the future plants, right? A residue or a few survivors re reserved as, as the germ of the next generation, sp the sperm viral, right? The production of this semen, seed, children, offspring, progeny. Right? So it says, verse 16 again. Hebrews 2 and 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. And how do you take upon you the seed of Abraham? Because what? He came through the line of Joseph, which was of the line of David. You see? There's no virgin birth in the scriptures, man. The Lord fulfilled prophecy perfectly, and that came through what? Him fulfilling the prophecy of being born of the children of Israel, right? As it was written in the book of Deuteronomy, of uh, of thy brethren shall I raise thee up a prophet like unto myself. That was Yahweh Shai, man. You know, so low willingness is edifying. I'm going to say, call all Yahweh Shimei Shai by Shimei Krokodai Shalom.